All right, all right. Hey, uh, Bonesy, do we have do we have an ad this week? Who's uh, our sponsor? This not week? sure. I don't think we have any actually. Oh, okay. How about uh, just call your mom. Call your mom. Tell your lover, or uh, you know, your wife or your daughters, your female friends. Just uh, let them know you got their back. How about that? Yeah, works for me. Offer code Crucible at checkout. <laughs> On to the show. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Crucible Radio. Podcast for all things Destiny 2, PvP, only Destiny 2. We refuse to talk about Destiny 1. <laughs> and there's nothing not you can do about it. It's been assumed Let's. for a year, but, you know, I just want to make that clear. We are not going to talk about Destiny 1 or Destiny 3, should it exist, I'll hypothetically. Be, well, then why did you invite me on the show? Why am I here? <laughs> We're not going to talk about Destiny 4, Cade's Stop Revenge. Up. Why am I here? You know, I've wondered about the Cade 7. Is he going to do a Cade 7? For your top 10 theories about the sequel video that I know you're working on. I know, and I'm going to leave Fatebringer out of that one too and let people flame <laughs> me in the comment section for like a year. <laughs> now I figure there's one of three things that's happening. Yeah. The first is that this is your first time listening to Crucible Radio and you're thinking, all right, all right, weird show. Kind of kind of strange, but uh, I'm, I'm in with it. If so, welcome to the show. Uh, second is that you've heard the show before and you're thinking something seems so, sw- different. Swain sounds awful this week. Like Swain. what is? <laughs> Wait, yeah. Swain, Swain seems maybe like he's in a weird Did spot. Did you blow down but... Swain? Why do you sound <laughs> weird like a kid? I don't know. Uh, in which case, um, we're going to clue you into what the third group of people already know. That's not Swain. That's not Swain. It's Swain's birthday. And Swain loves his wife, and they're having special birthday time. He has not told us what it is, but (laughs) I believe their special birthday time together is they had toilets installed side by side in their bathroom, and they're having a nice poop together. Look, it's just Uh, a theory. (laughs) I believe. But just personally, I believe. It's just, it's our best guess right now. It's like a tandem bike. Yeah. Um, they also have replacing him and our guest for the show, um, is the one and only friend of the show. You know him, you know, his voice, that sultry baritone or is the bass. I don't know. Hi, fallout. Hey birds. How are you? He's definitely not a bass. I mean, no offense, but you're definitely not a bass. Why would I take offense? To- I'm not a bass. <laughs> my, Hello, are you- my mother are you- always <laughs> told me I was a bass. <laughs> How about this? We're going to, we're going to burst into barbershop quartet Ooh. and whatever voice you, whatever note, you know, we're not, no, no, we're that. not doing that. Um, that being said, uh, we do have uh, a little something, something from Swain showing up later in the show. Uh, you might have heard him mention it last week. I won't give it away, but I personally have not heard it. I'm very excited to hear it. it is relevant to my interests. Yeah, me too. But Hey, we're going to talk about some destiny too. We'll be specific. Destiny 2 with our good friend Fallout, uh, who we've not talked to from this uh, this forsaken side of the the, the divide. Uh, now, Fallout, Fallout, yeah. question for you. Uh, a lot of people have played Forsaken. Have you also played Forsaken? Believe it or not, I have. Well, I personally uh-huh. don't, but <laughs> no way to find out the truth. <sighs> Uh, follow-up question to that fallout. Hmm. Destiny 2 Forsaken, better than all Halos combined? Ooh, that's a really rough question. Don't don't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> Good God, that's, that's rough. I, I can't answer honestly because I have really Would you say that just of because of how much you love Destiny now that you hate Halo? No. Why would I? No. I, I think he would say I that. Think he, I think he said that. <laughs> I think that's what he means. That's a direct quote. I believe he did. <laughs> I believe. All right, no, let's, let, wow, this is, a, this is a real chewy intro. If you're in that first group of people who have never heard the show, sorry, I feel like I want to throw up. We're dealing with some shit. Um, yeah, sorry we're to gonna just put on. you. Sometimes life <laughs> yeah. is a little Regular, too real you know and, you and too dark and stuff like that. But yeah, weird ass timeline. It's, it's a weird um, time. Let's pick it up though. Let's pick it up. Um, let's, let's talk about Destiny for real because the truth is we all still love this game. It is our little bastion of joy in this crazy mixed up world. Our little Sebastian um, of joy. <laughs> Wait, Fallout, I, I, I do have a question for you. Mm. If you could put it on a pie chart 
what would be your percentage of activities? Like how much yeah, time do you think question. you've Ooh. devoted to each of these new, like major components, PVE, raid, crucible, et cetera? Hmm. I think I spent a lot of time leveling up my guardian's power level. Is it, is it power level or is it light level? Which is it? I it's can't power remember. level power, now, but we're all just still saying light level. Light level. It's, like, it's the like the real, Sears Tower. Yeah, the real OGs say <laughs> light level. Yeah. No one's calling it the Willis no. Tower. That's just lame. But I want to get my light level up. So I've been doing like the week, I've been doing a lot of weekly and daily activities. No matter what that is, I just put my head down and, and do it. And when mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. doing that, uh, the raid is pretty recent. I did the raid. I really love that. I know this isn't, raid radio <laughs> but uh that was pretty fun and outside of that i've been playing a lot of gambit well i watched your gambit video uh from a couple weeks ago and i liked it because you went into it um as a team but it wasn't just hey we're all good we all kind of know what to do you went in with a very clear strategy in mind and you really made sure everyone was on the same page everyone knew what their job was and um, it certainly seemed effective. You know, the meta is still evolving. Oh, yeah. um, but you sort of break, break, break it down for us. You know, there's lots of things that work. But for you personally, it's your team. You know, you can stack it with the players that you want and you can decide who's doing what. What does the most competitive Gambit team look like for you? Are you referring to the, the Rush video, by the way? Uh, that's the one, man. That was a good one. I'm, I've already changed off of that meta. <laughs> Okay, good, good. Well, yeah. tell us tell us the rush strategy first, because yours was the first that laid it out that clearly. Yeah, we, we still do something like that. Uh, the rush strategy was that you want to kind of throw off the enemy team's momentum right away. You want to have your team push out right away, kill the ads, get the moats, dunk them super quickly. Uh, like, I think you have three people going in for moats, two or three people, and one person staying back doing damage and then as soon as you know all the enemies are dead, before even all the moats are picked up, you just let the moat people pick up the moats. And the other damage dealers, they've already rotated out. It's just doing whatever you can to get moats dunked quickly so that the, the other team gets blocked right away. And early on, you don't have as many tools to deal with the uh, being blocked early on in the game. So it's very easy to get your momentum slowed down. And the goal is to just try and get somebody to invade ASAP. Get somebody in there to invade while they have a really thick gray bar, meaning that they haven't dunked anything yet, and then just ruin their momentum. And then right there, you're off to such a good lead that you can just maintain momentum and go forth from there. That was kind of the idea on paper. And now in this video, you laid out a 15-5-5 strategy. A 15-5-5, um, yeah. you, you, Folks have heard these numbers if you're not familiar. Um, that's basically saying... Um, the first person collecting moats is trying to get to 15 as fast as possible to put out that large blocker. Uh, and then your two remaining moat collectors are just trying to get five. They're not going to, you know, if you get six, they're not going to say, well, I'll wait for 10. It's really charging towards that 25 and really prioritizing the large blocker first. Um, effective, right? And requires a degree of team coordination because getting to that first 15 is, uh, you know, you can miss it sometimes if, if people are a little eager picking them up. Um, have you stuck with the 15-5-5 or have you started to change that up? Uh, we actually started to mix it up. We found through experience that the most annoying blocker to deal with, and you guys can weigh in on this as you as you want, is the 5. The the yep. small blocker mm-hmm. with the phalanx. Is that how you pronounce that? The phalanx with the shield. Mm-hmm. Those things are hella annoying because right now the meta, at least from what I've seen in Gambit, is that a lot of people have a shotgun. Usually... The, uh, the the Ikelos. I- Ikelos? I-, I never know how to pronounce that. A full auto shotgun, because it does a lot of damage to both blockers and the primeval, right? So yep. because That's most funny. people have a full auto shotgun, especially the Ikelos, you can shred the 10 and even the 15 relatively easy right off the bat. But the 5 is annoying because you have to get around that shield and they'll they'll blast you away. You have to jump over them. It, you know, sometimes they'll block the melee and push you, it, it's very irritating to deal with the five. So lately we've been going in with the mentality of you go in, we, we again have one guy damaging in the back. Sometimes we have two. And uh, two people damaging in the back, but you know, two or three people up front grabbing moats. But right when you get five, like you're out. And that's where another, it's like the, the other team isn't really expecting it. You know what I mean? Because usually if you're playing Gambit and the other team is just kind of like, oh, well, we're going to do a good job, but they're not like 
super precise. They don't have a game plan on paper. They're just like, we're just going to do the best we can. They, they kind of go into autopilot mode. And uh, mm-hmm. so when they're picking up modes, they're like, oh, I have, I have six or seven. You know, I could put in seven right now. I could go for the 10. What do you guys want to do? Meanwhile, we're over there like five, you have five, you're done. Go five, you have five, you're done. Go. <laughs> like, it's just, it's so precise. And we just, we flood them with the fives. You know what I mean? So, so are, like, if possible, I mean, would you, approaching that first 25 to get your invader, would you do five small blockers? Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, man, that's nasty. See, I, I like that. When I solo queue Gambit, I gen, generally try and just worry about the five first just to get that little bit of tempo, assuming my teammates are kind of de- default to, you know, clear every last ad, pick up every last moat. Um, so just to kind of, yeah, get that that early tip. Uh, five small blockers sounds annoying. It is annoying. <laughs> uh, and that's what Gambit's all about. It, honestly, it really kind of is. It, it is. It's whoever can annoy the other team better and, and more often. <laughs> it's kind of what it is. Pretty much. And, and even though the smaller blockers are killed, like they have less health, but it's not about trying to, because you don't really expect the enemy team, they're not going to get killed by, by a blocker unless they're <laughs> really Terrible, or they make a big mistake. Unless they make a really big mistake, they're not going to get killed by a blocker. But it's just about delaying them. You want to put up roadblocks. The blocker is a very irritating roadblock. And if you get that five moats right away, instantly you're putting up a roadblock. Even if it takes them, even if they shred the blocker in three seconds, and then the the bank comes back up, and then they put in their moats. You have taken four seconds away from their progress, and every second counts in Gambit. So you've made it to 25. Yeah. It's invasion time. Um, I'm assuming, you know, you know, sort of based on loadout, you're going to have a designated invader for that first we one. We do. Yeah, we have a designated. We usually have two people. And it's kind of like a, a, a floating, because we, we kind of have a rule that you don't invade on our team unless you have one of two things. One, a roaming super charged and ready to go, or two, power ammo. If you don't have one of those two things, you're not invading. Mm-hmm. And you just you just wait, even if you have the window, even if the portal is open, unless it's like a really juicy opportunity. They have like a really the thickest gray bar you've ever seen in your life. And like, <laughs> you're like oh, God, we got to shut them down. But uh, normally it's like you don't have power, don't have super. You're not going anywhere. Yep. Well, so uh, you, you've made it. The portal's up. Somebody's got power. Somebody's ready to go. Um, I mean, you know, the obvious choice is you're going to see a lot of sleeper simulant there. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's say you're invading. Uh, you personally, right? There's a lot of options here. Tell me, what are your loadouts going to be if you're focusing on invading? And once you're through that portal, what do you? What are your goals? How How are you spending that time? You got to have uh, a long range. First of all, rocket launchers are out. When I originally played Gambit, I was so convinced that cluster bomb rocket launchers was going to be like the meta, right? Because it's like, oh, they do good for DPS. Like you see videos of people doing strikes or the nightfall really quickly, and what are they doing? They're doing that like spam. The cluster bomb rocket tactic, right? On a boss, yeah. it, it doesn't it doesn't work in, in gaming because you need something that works on your primeval and on other people. And rocket launchers in a gigantic open map, so easy to avoid. So like, you, you really want to have. I mean, you can you can make anything work if you're a good enough player. But what I feel comfortable with is a really good, reliable long range weapon. Either, either that's going to be a sniper, linear fusion, or the sleeper simulant. And I I don't want to <laughs> piss people off, but at this point, you know me, I don't really care. I just, I just do whatever I have to do to win. I, I, just, I just don't care. So I'm me. I almost 100% of the time go in with the sleeper simulant because for my loadout, all our team's loadouts are coordinated in advance. I have no reason to use any other gun than the sleeper because when I play Gambit, I have the Icolo shotgun because it shreds the primeval. That's my primeval shredder right there. And mm-hmm. for your primary, as well. yeah, yeah. Yeah. and for your, your primary kinetic, uh, you know, whatever feels good to you. Sometimes I use better devils with kill clip. Sometimes I'll use a go figure if I want a little range, something like that. But, uh, so that's two legendary weapons. Why would I not? And like, I'm the designated invader. And I think by far hands down, the best invasion weapon is sleeper simulant. So I have an exotic slot open. I'm the invader. Why would I not put it on? Because it doesn't take any skill. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I, I really don't. 
but you can make other we, things uh, work. I've used the linear fusion just when I wanted to like mix things up. And that was fun because mine has like snapshot. You can, you can get it done real quick. I don't have the catalyst on my sleeper. So sometimes I'll get out sleepered by a sleeper that has <laughs> sleeper catalyst. I'm saying sleeper a lot. I really, I apologize. About that. Yeah. But the linear fusion that I have is, you know, snapshots. So sometimes I'll roll with it because you can get the quick shot, you know, save yourself. I know you're a, a warlock, but do you have like a top three supers? for invading that, oh, yeah, you, for that sure. you'd go in with besides, you know, just the warlock ones? <sighs> okay. What are we good for with the, you know, I think a lot of people say they like Dawnblade. I actually don't. I, for invading, I love it for PVP, hmm. but because most Gambit maps are so very, very wide open, extremely long sight lanes and everybody is preparing for the invader. People have the sleeper simulator. They're ready for you. You know what I mean? And the Dawnblade can move quickly, but it doesn't have what I really like, which is the teleport factor. And the Stormcaller, if I had to pick my number one super for invading, it would probably be the Stormcaller. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, because the Ionic Blink is, it's so, with, with so many people out there using the sleeper simulant, you can see the gun charging up across the map and it's the easiest timing in the world to just ionic (laughs) blink and you're like yeah good job wasting all your power and then you just get up right in their face and it's the lightning like what do you you can't run from lightning it just doesn't work well that's interesting so that is that is a choice specifically designed to counter the dominant meta that's right what you're going to be going up against that's right that's interesting So let's say let's say sleepers off the table, right? Sure. You know, you're inspecting them on fly-in. You know they're not using sleeper. Um, what's your choice from there? If they're not using sleeper, that's right. My, you, sometimes I'll send uh, my girlfriend Anno, who I play with all the time in game, but she'll be the invader with hammer. Because if they don't have the ability to sleeper someone out of their super, the hammer is really hard to to shut down because they're beefy. They move relatively quickly. The hammer is hit really hard. I mean. And she plays the Titan because we like to have a Titan on the team for backup in case we need uh, the melting point factor on the primeval, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, our, well, and, and I think that's a, that's a good spot to transition to, to the end of the match. Primeval's up, you know, you're, you, you, you've got an invader coming, you know, tr- try and try and bait him out. But now it is primeval shredding time. And I really enjoyed, uh, uh, I think it was the second Gambit video you made um, where you showed your team's strategy for doing this um, that actually did not involve sleeper simulant. Sort of tell us, w- what's what's the formula for that sort of instant shred? I will tell you. And uh, for anyone listening, the video he's referring to is where we shred the primeval in three and a half seconds. Strongly <laughs> recommend you go look it up. Don't give me grief for the timer. Timed myself. It's three and a half seconds. Get off my back. Okay, anyway. Uh <laughs> So Fallout, no one gives you grief on this show. <laughs> no one ever on has a problem internet? with what's said on Crucible yeah, Radio. All right. All right? <laughs> Never we no drama free in, in 2003, yeah, right? So here's my <laughs> let's let's move on yeah, from that. Okay. Here's, here's my here's my primeval strat. We've got it down to a really good science. And it all depends the first thing, the first factor on the table is that when the primeval, when we spawn our primeval, everything that we do from that point depends on where the enemy team is in the game. For example, let's say we summon the primeval. The enemy team has 40 moats in the bank. We are way ahead of them, right? Way, way, way ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are going to sit back and do nothing. We are going to wait, and we are going to bait out the invader because usually, I would say nine times out of ten, when a team summons a primeval, the other team panics and their plan is to invade right away because their mentality is, oh my God, they already summoned the primeval. I have to invade right now or we're going to lose. Like We have to invade right now. So that's what we've seen happen many, many times. So if we're in the lead. It's not like they're going to dunk 30 moats all at once. We have time on our side. So we're going to sit back and do nothing. If we have time, we will destroy all the ads surrounding the primeval, you know, they got the wizards out there. We'll just clean the area. We're just literally just taking our time. If we want to tease them a little bit, we'll like shoot the primeval with, you know, what a kinetic pulse rifle, just so they can see the health is going down and they start, they start to panic a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love the level. Of, it's uh, Yeah, it works. So like just, they, the invader comes game. in, right? We, you instantly 
drop what you're doing. And we're like, okay, now we group up, we focus the invader. And here's the beauty of it. If you manage to kill the invader and your team knows what you're doing, unless you make a mistake, you will win because there's a cooldown on how frequently you can invade the other team. You can't just send people. What was that movie? Oh God, I love that movie. I'm in pain that I can't remember. The one with Charlie Day and the kaiju come out of the ocean. Pacific Rim. Oh, thank you. God, I. They say the mind is the first thing to go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I wish I had. Yeah. I wish I had the jump on bones. Dude, to I say love. Atlantic Circle. Or something <laughs> just to the punch, but yeah, no, Paci- this window. isn't Pacific Rim. They don't come more frequently over time. No, it's just like there's a set cooldown time. So once you kill the invader, you have like I don't know what the exact number is, but I think it's like a, a fifteen to twenty second. I think it's twenty second window where no one can invade you. And that is more than enough time to just set up and kill the primeval. And what we did was we have uh, we have one tether Night Stalker. We have one hunter arc staff with the Raiden Flux for a little bit of extra damage. And we have me, the warlock with the Well of Radiance, the new Dawnblade super. And we have Anno, the Titan, with her melting point. Now, I know that if you combine certain things like Tether will override Melting Point. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, Melting Point is the way to go. But we found that with Melting Point, way too frequently, Anna would go in and try to activate it and she would get shredded by the remaining Taken in the area because, you know, it's you're, you're going to get team shot like crazy by the Taken when you go in there. And Melting Point doesn't last as long as we want it to. So the Tether is great because it lasts a really long time. And again, if you have the Invader dead, there's no need to rush because you can already kill the Primeval in like under five seconds if you do it correctly. So you just, we have one person drop the tether right on the primeval. I run right up, I drop my well of radiance and uh, the arc staff goes to town by flinching the primeval with a little uh, R2 action there. And uh, yeah, we just activate our Icolo shotguns in the radiance well with the tether and then we just melt the primeval's face off. Now, a lot of people are like, why? I <laughs> Believe it or not, people argue with me in the YouTube comment section. And and even stranger, some of them are mean. Now, I know that it's kind of <laughs> random. Mean people on the internet? You sure I'm from my figure. Yeah, they, they find me. But so they're like, oh, this guy's an idiot. Don't you know that you can... God, I'm in a really sassy mood tonight. But they're like, don't you know that you can just melee the primeval to prevent yourself from getting flinched? The whole thing about flinching the primeval is you don't want them to do the ground pound. Because if they do the ground pound, it's obviously very counterproductive. You're trying to shred them with a shotgun and they're pounding you away. So the arc staff keeps them flinched. And yeah, while it's true that you can, right when they ground pound, you can melee to keep yourself because the melee has that little like auto lock on feature, you know, sucks you in, but you're interrupting the DPS phase and it's easy to mistime that. And again, with the shotgun damage you already have, it's like, you don't need to pile on a fourth Ikolosh, it's just much easier to have, they, they whack away with the arc staff and you're flinching the primeval and we just melt them with the shotgun and it's over. So let me, let me rewind. So I said, what we do depends on where we are in the timeline, right? So let's say we activate our primeval second. <laughs> Not to brag, but that doesn't happen very often, but let's say that, that it does happen. <laughs> so we're, we're second, they're, they're ahead of us. Usually we will send in Anno to be the invader at that point, because by that point in the game, by the primeval, everybody has power. So it's not like earlier when I said like, hey, if you don't have power or super, you're not going in. Everybody usually has power at that point. Anno usually has her hammer titan super at that point. And we don't need her because she, see, if you had a, a situation where only the hammer titan with the hammer strike, AKA the melting point was like your key primeval debuff, then you couldn't send them mm-hmm. in because they're too vital mm-hmm. to the plan. But we don't need that. We already have the tether. We can easily get the job done with two shotguns, one well, one tether, one flinching arc hunter. So Anno becomes the expendable invader later on if they happen to be ahead of us in the primeval race. So basically, like to sum it up a little bit, you basically always have two roaming invader supers, like great against guardians. And you're always going to have at least two abilities that are just going to like totally mess up a, a primeval and you know, those, those sort of cover you in all situations. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, because I run with the well of radiance more often than not. Mm, that's I, right. Yeah. I'm not often going in with my super. It's like, usually 
if I have power ammo and I'm feeling good about it, I'll go in. But if Anno has power ammo and the hammers, I'll be like, mm, maybe you should go. Cause she has more right. options available to her, but we definitely have like one or two people predetermined. It's like, we're the invaders. And we just kind of decide who goes when, depending on what's going on in the match, where we are, where they are, how we're feeling, all that stuff. All right. Well, have you won a Gambit game yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking for that first one real soon. <laughs> I, 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 I got high hopes. Your theory uh, is impeccable. I hope to see you pull it off sometime. I want to talk about how the primevals should be Kaiju. I think that'd be way cooler. <laughs> and Charlie Day like- should be the drifter. Yeah. <laughs> Bungie, are you listening? Kaiju on the field! <laughs> oh, that is good. He's wearing the green man costume bad. or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, let's let's move on from Gambit. I think that uh, is as good um, uh, an outlining of uh, a Gamba meta that is, that is effective, if not the Gambit meta. Um, well, let's talk about other stuff. Let's talk about the crucible. Yeah. Um, and I want to start with, uh, like a quick play environment because comp's got considerations quick play. We can kind of goof around a little bit. We've got some new weapons to play with. Uh, what have you been having fun with in quick play? Ooh, a lot of things. What are you, uh, pub stomping with, huh? <laughs> what are you embarrassing yourself with by not rolling in a solo queue? You jerk pub stomper, no skill, nothing. Uh, Fallout, the, the comments have been rough lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've been rough. a little too easily. <laughs> no, I, I don't mean to. No, the comments have been great. Like, it's, I've actually gotten huge oh, hold on. Just, on just, one sec, yeah, sure. just one sec. Just one sec. What video you love? Uh, oh, God. Uh, here we go. God roll. Uh, tell you something. Are you bringing up my video no right God now to look men. for a Is comment? Is he adding a comment to a Fallout's devil video? Of oh, God. The poop. <laughs> devil of the poop comment left birds uh, you, you posted that under famous birds no i posted it under my all <laughs> unfamous famous birds, birds. <laughs> regular regular birds. that might be the first time i have ever commented on a youtube video do you uh, feel dirty <laughs> Um, I don't feel great, <laughs> but because I know it was pointed at you. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll let it go. It's all, right. it's all good. It's all right. Um, what was I even talking? Right. Oh no, I got it. Okay, what was I feeling? Yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. You, what you having fun? I'm having with? fun with? And, and like we could be talking weapons. We could be talking. Yeah. Uh, new I'll, I'll throw things out there and then just armor rolls. Y- give yeah, me your gut reaction. Like, what do you oh, love? Yeah, that's good. Or no, I don't. Yeah. Know. All right, uh, the yeah. chaperone. Uh. Tasty, love the quest for it. Uh, nice and straightforward, um, and it's uh, it's it's nasty in the right hands. You got to be on point with your aim. Though. You got to be really on point. Yeah, I feel like like chaperone is really reinforcing the hand cannon wisdom of like it's better to wait until you can get the headshot. Take that extra yeah, second yeah. to make sure it's a headshot, then spam spam it and and. Uh, yeah. And don't get do don't get too antsy. Headshot. You know what I mean. Like take that extra yeah. frame or two to like yep. to really line it up. And I like using the chaperone and a hand cannon together because then you put on that Whoosh. helmet that has the perk precision targeting. I think it's called because that affects both hand cannons mm, and yeah. the chaperone. Just a good little combo there. We call that synergy in the business. Uh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I call it the devil of poop. <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, the ace of spades. You guys liking that gun? Yeah. Yes. Like yeah. Well, I mean, you asked me what I like. Uh, the I don't. This is like old. I know. I feel really boring for using this gun, but like I can't. It's my favorite shotgun in all of D two. It's the deadpan delivery. I have to use it. It feels good. It's like I know we have new shotguns. I know I'm being lame, but like, come on, it's the deadpan. Now that one yeah. stayed in the energy slot, right? It did. Yeah. Okay. Yep. When I want an energy slot, high impact hand cannon, uh, that is my preference as well. Uh, for folks who have forgotten, uh, just just rattle it off real quick. Yeah, yeah. Top three things you need in a high impact shotgun in order. Impact, pellet spread, range in that order. Uh, impact is high impact. Yeah. Pellet spread, that means one thing, right? It means full choke. Full choke. Or anything you know, that's avoid not. Avoid the hell out yeah, of smooth no bore. Smooth bore. <laughs> if your goal is one hit yep. kills, yeah, no smooth bore. Yep, and then ranges take it where you can get it, but uh, and nothing matters like quite like that full choke does. That's right, buddy. Go figure. 
Uh, all right, keep going. What uh, else do you like? The trust hand cannon, which you get from Gambit. You guys liking that? I really want one. I, I'm not a one eighty guy, and I'm it? gonna. Oh, you don't got a trust, <laughs> dude. Oh my god, I've had. I know I've had a lot of people with really bad RNG. It's it's so unfortunate. You just have to keep grinding. At least Gambit's fun to play, but when you get one. I'm not really a fan yeah. of the 180 RPM, but like there was just something about it. Like I used it and I was like, this is an accurate gun. Like I feel like I'm cruising, like I'm just landing my shots. It's going really good. It, I think it's got like that sound to it. I mean, we, oh, yeah. it's been a while since we've talked about how all of that goes into like what really does feel good, even if it's not just, you know, reducing the time to kill. But yeah, yeah. that gun has this snap and that pop. Like it feels like, I'm like, oh, I'm getting ready for Red Dead Redemption 2 with this thing. And it's got that <laughs> like that sound makes it feel yeah. tighter and stronger than other 180s for me, it's, even though I don't totally vibe with the archetype. It's like when you're making a sandwich, you know, what tastes better, cutting it down the middle or cutting it into triangles? Triangles taste better, baby. It's like you, you can't you can't explain it. <laughs> no, no, that's and true. The, that's it's true. a fact. Look it up. Oh, my God. The YouTube <laughs> comments, they're piling up. <laughs> Look it up, right? It's science. You can't argue this. Uh, I... I love to cut my uh, sandwiches into triangles, but uh, only hoagies and subs. They're uh, just visualize that. <laughs> <laughs> they're really long pieces. When you're, <laughs> they're, just, they're, they're, they're daggers. <laughs> um, and uh, on the hand cannon, you know, we've got we've got I think a, a more limited pool of perks, which is nice. Uh, fewer terrible ones. Uh, what, what's going to be, I, I don't want to say your preferred role cause good luck, but what perks are you looking for on a hand cannon? Usually like on a hand cannon, um, you're looking for, ideally you want high range, uh, because range, as we know, you know, we listened to that episode of crucible radio way back when, when you had, Oh, who was it? Somebody, I can't remember. Was it Noosk? Somebody confirmed okay. that range in destiny, very strongly tied to accuracy. So like the more range you have on mm-hmm. your yep. hand cannon, you got Aim assist drop off. Yeah, there you go. You you want the range. That's your primary stat that you're looking for. And then anything after that, I mean, it's it's always going to be what feels good. But me personally, it's like I love kill clip. It's a great sure. perk for a hand cannon. Outlaw. Come on. That's really hot. Tasty. Quick reload. You have range finder because it factors into that whole range thing. I like that one too. Uh, those are my favorite perks for hand cannons, I would say. Well, let me ask you a question. This is something we haven't touched on yet, and I don't know if if the community's quite th- at this level of sort of uh, finessing it yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, what mod are you going to be putting into a hand cannon? Range every time. Every time. Every, every time. single. And you know what pains me? Because there are people who tweet at me who are like, oh, yo, check it out. Fallout, I got the god rule. And like, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to ruin anybody's parade because it's cool. I love talking to people who love playing the game and I just like they, they just get kill clip and you know, outlaw and they're like done. It's a God roll. And like, I look down and the masterwork is like, I don't know, handling, which is like, it's not bad <laughs> to have a handling mod. We like handling who wouldn't take free handling. I would take it, but like you, you really want the range. Like my hand cannon is going to be more accurate than yours at range. Cause I have way more range than you do. I also think that, I mean, yeah, that's good. That's like objectively strong. Yeah. But I think it's funny because kill clip doesn't, you know, go away if you don't reload fast enough. It's only going to show up once you reload. So you can get the same damage effect if you just reload, you know, behind cover for like half a second longer. (laughs) It's not like Rampage where it's like, well, it's gone by the time I reload. (laughs) It'll be there. So it's like that outlaw is like, all right, I get it. But that's going to be a PVE gun for me. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I mean, you you are correct that re- like kill clip doesn't activate until <laughs> until the the reload is done, so it, it doesn't right. super matter. But there are a couple times it's a little situational where like maybe you've probably been there. You're in a situation where there's like you get one kill, but there's two other guardians charging you down, and you're like, oh god, reload quick, quick, quick. But like <laughs> yeah, at least oh, if you yeah, get that reload, the right, yeah, real quick. In the right ag- aggressive with, yeah, situation, yeah, yeah. It's like, but it's also just like I, mean, I think like now that we have random rolls. And now that we know like, well, okay, in the first year, there's three perks I'm always going for. Now it's like, if you get them all together, it's the best. But I do (laughs) think there's like more nuance to the random roles now that we have. Oh, Snapshot too. I forgot that one. Snapshot's good. Mm -hmm. Always tasty. It's a passive perk, right? You're always going to be benefiting. Of course. Uh, Let's take a little turn. Um, And I'm not talking about exotics. Let's talk about 
armor. Um, I've, we're still, I think, as a community, getting our head wrapped around all the different things our armor can do. We're on this light grind. It's no joke. I'm currently wearing my highest light stuff. It's just how it goes. I'm not trying to spend those cores yet. Um, but I certainly have been inspecting things quite a bit, looking at all these perks. And so much of this is going to be sort of loadout dependent. So let's shift gears a little bit. Now we're talking about comp. This is your sweaty try hard build, top to bottom. Uh, first off, what what weapons are you going to be taking into a competitive playlist? But what I'm interested in, armor wise, what do you what are you looking for? What what perks on on your armor are going to make the difference for you? Okay, for armor perks. First, you get your weapons set. Before you even put on the armor, you got to get your weapons determined. You got to have, you know, three weapons that you feel really confident in. Like, you're like, if I go in, what are, are my best chances at winning? You, you take those best weapons you have, you put them on. And now that you have those weapons on, you look through every available armor perk and you're like, okay, what benefits this loadout the most? What's my game plan? So for me, I go in with a... The Void Warp uh, Void Walker. I really like that class because I'm a Warlock so player. Tasty. So good. And um, the handheld Supernova Grenade is something I really like to punish people with who overly ape. You know, we're in like a very strong shotgun meta right now. People are talking on Twitter. Don't know if you've seen it. That snipers are, are weak. They're underperforming because they get flinched too easy and shotguns are too prevalent. So people ape. And because people ape, I'm going to counter that meta by punishing them with the one-hit kill grenade. So I try to put in mods that will reduce my grenade cooldown. Mm, yep. And um, for weapon-wise, it's it's really just as easy as, like, what's my primary? What am I going to be using the most? Because if I have a shotgun, sure, I could put on a perk that's like, oh, yeah, it'll help my shotgun targeting. But... I'm not going to be using that as frequently as whatever my kinetic or my main shooty shoot gun, like if I'm using the ace of spades. So you put on sure. hand cannon targeting, reduced incoming hand cannon flinch. If you're using a shotgun, what else do you want to pair with that? Uh, I like to put on shotgun scavenger because that does work in PVP and it does stack. So I like having the ability to pick up extra shotgun ammo. Yeah, because then... My- I was wondering about, yeah, what what is... Uh, now, Fallout, if you'll sign some shit for me real quick. <laughs> uh, brand new phrase I just invented. <laughs> um, I w- I'm really wondering which of these perks, which seems so PvE-ish, uh, which one of these have effect uh, in in PvP? Is it all of them? I, I think... Possible? I don't want to say it's all of them because I'm going to forget one. I'm going to leave one out and then I'm going to get that <laughs> YouTube comment where like, it's, it's not back. all... Yeah, it's, 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 it's birds. It's birds going on. Regular birds on YouTube. But uh, I, I think I need to look at them more, but most of them seem to work. I was doing comparisons about the incoming flinch you know what i mean like reduced incoming flinch for whatever it, it's there mm-hmm. it's minor but it's there so like anything you can do to give yourself that tiny little edge to support whatever loadout you happen to be running then yeah do it well all right um i guess i've got one last question for you um you know we sort of talked about the subclasses a bit um so i'd say if, if there's anything subclass wise we haven't talked about that you'd like to mention any uh synergy as you put it that you'd uh you'd like to point out um now would be the time well i can mention two things one of them is you have to keep your eyes peeled because right now in destiny we have a shortage of exotic dropping which you may have gathered by reading the most recent twab and uh there's a piece of armor that for the life of me i cannot remember what it's called but you know what it does it gives you if you're a hunter, a gunslinger, and you have a blade barrage, best super in the game, by the way, and you use that blade barrage and you get a kill or several kills, any damage you did with that blade barrage will contribute to the upcoming energy of your next blade barrage. It's like a hunter version of the... Am I dying? Is my brain collapsing? I don't know. what Apotheosis. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> it's the skull. It's uh, like... Bad juju. No, no, it's it's like a skull. It's like you're wearing a, a skull of Ahamkara. Thank you. Is that it? I think. I guess. Hull of skull. The, the, the one where you get a Nova Bomb kill and it gives you energy for your next Nova Bomb. You know, it makes a ska beat play when you drop your Nova oh, Bomb. God. <laughs> so it's like that, but for the the gunslinger. And we went up against a team 
an iron banner with three. First of all, there were six blade barrage hunters and three of them had that armor. <laughs> Dear God. And I was crying. <laughs> Frequently we were dying to that super. Uh, yeah, please keep your eyes peeled for that. That is actually a really viable strategy if you go into a game of comp because you might have trouble building momentum, but if you have an entire team doing that, that's like the ultimate super chain. Keep your eyes peeled. Yeah. But uh, other than that, the Whirlwind Guard... Arc staff, that's a really funny and effective. You know, when I first saw that subclass, I was like, all right, well, there's there's your meme subclass right there. You know, I totally wrote it off right away. But I've gotten <laughs> my ass handed to me by people using that silly, they're they're twirling the baton around like it's a parade or something like that. And <laughs> and uh, it's no joke. It, it counters a lot of supers. So it's like the new shutdown super. Like if you if they have the ability to hold on to it and they see you pop a super that they know full well they can counter. They're just going to do it and they're going to laugh at you. It's a very good counter super because of how much it shuts down. Interesting. So try I got to hand it to the, uh, to the subclass team and, you know, cause like it's such an interesting mechanic and it, it's always been sort of delegated to that void Titan is the one thing that has a shield and it's just that one mechanic. And in Destiny 2, especially now, like it's cool to have this sort of blocking multifaceted super or uh, we've got roaming supers with projectiles. You know, like yeah. there's this really strong variety. And it's like so cool to think about back when it was just like, all right, you got Fist of Havoc and it goes in one spot and you got a Nova Bomb. You know, like yeah, yeah. That, those were, that, that was the extent of it. And it's really cool how that's expanded. So yeah, I kind of agree. Like, Definitely the first time someone spun that thing in front of me, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I just got like destroyed by my own. <laughs> 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 there, was a, there was a great clip from, uh, oh gosh, who was it? Pure Chill. You guys know that guy? Oh, He's yeah. a yeah, PlayStation player. He put a clip on Twitter. They were doing, I think they were doing comp and it was countdown. And <laughs> one guy left on the enemy team and they had activated the bomb. They were on offense. One guy left on defense and <laughs> they roll over. And the hunter is there disarming the bomb. And they're like, oh, I just tear him apart. And he's twirling the staff <laughs> and they can't kill him. Like he's literally <laughs> blocking, like Pure Chill is trying to hit him with the, <laughs> the, the storm collar super. He's like zapping him with Palpatine lightning. And he's just spinning the stick. And they're like, oh my God, kill this guy. <laughs> and they, they ended up killing him, but it was way too close for comfort. That's really uh, funny. That's great. Uh, all right, last thing I want to talk to you about, um, I have not had a chance to play it yet. It's fresh. Uh, we've got Breakthrough now. Have you played it? I on? have not. I have not had time. I really want to. Didn't it just come out this week? Yeah, we gave you a day. Yeah, you, you gave me a whole day. <laughs> Thanks, boys. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Uh, I would love to play it, though. Isn't that the one where like it's uh, it's kind of like neutral assault from Halo? Kind of like that? Yeah, yeah, I got I got a couple games in, and it's pretty fun, and it's kind of like a nice uh, change up in pace. Uh, there's a round system, but the rounds are nice and kind of long and play out in different ways because there's phases within the round. So I think it stands out from survival and and countdown okay. in that sense, while still being an objective playlist. And there's like it's pretty cool. I like the strategy. I like how supers can be involved. Like, are you gonna burn it to get that first one, or are you gonna save it? for the, for the cap on the second point. And, uh, I like the first round I ever played just had a good round. It didn't win this game, but I got like a triumph for denying a cap. Like they didn't touch our cap after getting the second or, or the one in the middle, you know? Oh, cool. And it was really fun just like holding them off and playing that like last stand thing. So it's a cool mode. I like it. I'm definitely going to play it very soon. I it's, it's on my to-do list about with a million other things. All right, we uh, it's safe to say we all have an enormous list of uh, of homework, <laughs> <laughs> homework to, to to do, to study, to turn in. Um, but uh, yeah, it's fun homework. Sometimes, sometimes it feels like I'm just just killing these thralls. Just uh, you know, <laughs> Dad told me I couldn't play any crucible till I kill all these fucking thralls. I kill the thralls, uh, but it's it's all fun. We're all having a good time. Um, what are you looking forward to? Uh, for over the rest of Forsaken, what are you, uh, you know, before before we get any crazy brand new content expansion, uh, what do you think we'll see that we don't have yet? 
wait, what am I looking forward to that's new or what we see that we don't have? Uh, Cause it's like in, the same in, thing in, in like, the future, uh, between now and the next expansion between now and the next expansion. Okay. Uh, well, Bungie's kind of been killing it with all like the, what should I call it? Like hidden content. Is it hidden? Like, like, you know, the dungeon thing that came out like a sure. couple of days ago, that just completely yeah. blindsided Drink me. I was like, City, what man. is, what is that? And like, I went in and was like, wow, it's really cool. And they've been doing more stuff like that. You know, like the dreaming city changes a lot. And I just, oh, there's, there's balls more everywhere stuff. now. Ew. Balls and lines. Don't know what that's about. I'm tripping balls. Turn subtitles here. on. But uh, you know they have more content like that because they're that's like they know now that we love that stuff. Remember when they gave us the black spindle and like we just ate it up like it was just <laughs> chocolate and syrupy. We were like, oh yeah, give me more of that. And uh, I think they're working on more stuff like that. They've been killing it so far, and whatever they hit me with, I'm really excited to just. I don't know. It's just too much. I, I, my brain is shutting down. Like they're giving us too much content, but I love it. And I, I can't wait to see what else they give us. Keep your music on. If you're like me, who usually throws it on zero after the first campaign, because the music in the dreaming city this week is like spooky and techno, like the whisper mission and uh, worth, worth listening to at least a couple times. I will do that. I usually keep the music off because I stream and it distracts me, but I'll, I'll turn it on for you bones. Well, just for like a second, yeah, man. I'll, I'll do it. I'll Enjoy do it. this game. I'll, I'll, all right. I'll do it, man. Good. Leave me alone. All right. <laughs> and if, fucking tell people where to find you on the internet. God, you can find me at youtube.com slash fallout plays and anything at all. Just type slash fallout plays at the end of it. See what happens. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I have a SoundCloud. I don't know about it. It's, it's YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. But, but just throw it out there. Let's see what happens. Get, let's get weird with it. I, I think you do need a SoundCloud. I'm what would be on SoundCloud. Fallout SoundCloud? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just weird stuff that no one would ever want to listen to. I just... Uh, Maybe it could be like the like the audio from like a video that you recorded on your phone where it's like late at night and you're doing karate <laughs> and you're trying to see how good your form is and just a lot of like... <laughs> just like... It's 45 minutes of yeah. that, like most nights, a little longer sometimes. Exactly, yeah. Gold. Gold birds. Gold. gold. Karate audio. Okay. <laughs> Karate bones. How could you not? This is, uh, over, I did, this is overhand, left-hand chop what is take the one. Matter with <laughs> I wasn't going to validate it with that mashup word. karate yo. All right, buddy, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, it's long overdue, but I think we waited, uh, we ra- waited an appropriate amount of time to really have a uh, you know, give you time to to do that thing you do with uh, <laughs> with uh, the game, and you figure stuff out, and you tell us, and then we repeat it until we forget the details, <laughs> and then we plug your website. As always, uh, thank you for having me. That's just a treat. Um, all right, well, um, should we kick we it over to Swain? A very special Swain segment. Fallout. Would you like to segue? Sure. Uh, so stay tuned because Swain is coming at you with lore. For PvP dummies, check it out. Not 100 percent sure that's what it's called, but uh <laughs> that, that could be what it's called. Now. Oh boy, that's what it's I'm, called. I'm calling now. it that now. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I think that applies to uh, at least all of us to be safe. So check out the website. Bye. Bye. Hey everybody, music this week from Black Communion. Check them out. It's blackcommunion.bandcamp.com. Uh, it, it, this is good. <laughs> it's just really, it's really good. Like, this is just steady on the rotation. You should go check them out, download it. It's on Bandcamp. Go get it. And hey, if you're a musician, we want to hear from you. Send us an email, crucibleradio at gmail.com. Well, everybody, I am here at the end of the episode to kind of give you a little little thing I'm working on here with a friend of mine. And it's for all of you out there who love Destiny for its PvP, but have no clue that the story 
of Destiny is endless and amazing. Um, welcome to the show, Mylan Games. Hi, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, of course. I uh, I think these. Uh, I think the best title for this is Lore for PvP Dummies because I was once a PvP dummy, and then I started reading and watching some of your videos, and it's just a rabbit hole. It's it's endless. <laughs> <laughs> it's um the thing about like Destiny Law is it was pretty hard to get into in year one, but it's also pretty hard to catch up now as well. I think that's like there's a bit of a barrier to to entry so to speak, <laughs> uh, especially for people that have sort of taken a bit of a break. So um, it's it's not it's not just you guys. <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> uh, returning to Destiny have a lot of different questions about what is going on and um, it's in a really good place now too. So it's a sort of perfect time to, to, to talk about it. I know that Bones, my co-host, he was saying that uh, he's waiting for an, him to get enough triumphs and lore in the game. And then one day he's going to sit down with like, a bottle of whiskey and just like read through it and just like sip on whiskey the entire time. And that sounds like a wonderful afternoon. <laughs> well, you know, the, <laughs> just kind of go down the rabbit the hole. The cool thing is now you can, you can look at it sort of anywhere. We're uh, in the game. <laughs> right? I mean, you can look, you can look at it in the game too, but um, I think what a lot of people found out when they removed the Grimoire cards is how much they were reading sort of, you know, between lunch breaks uh, or, you know, on a lunch break between work or like, you know, waiting oh, to pick, sure. <laughs> pick your kid up from school or like, you know, whilst you have breakfast and sort of didn't, you know, although everyone was asking for it to be in game, a lot of people didn't realize we, we want both. <laughs> we want it to be not only in game, but we want to be able to, you know, pull your mobile out and actually read stuff when you're away from the console. And, um, you know, that's the cool thing now as well is that you can, you can do that when you don't have the console. Like, you know, to be honest, I don't read law in game. Like when I'm, when I'm in, when I'm in destiny, I'm I'm playing, I I read law outside of playing destiny. That's my preferred method of, of sort of, um, sort of analyzing and researching. So where exactly do you prefer to read? Uh, lore. So I have to do a really big shout out to a website called Ishtar Collective. And I highly I recommend for anyone getting into the law and is having troubles sort of understanding things or knowing where to start is to go to ishtarcollective.net. Um, and what they do is they do, um, I guess, data mine a lot of the law. And well, you know, they, I, you would probably call it data mind. There's a lot of it in the API, right? Yeah, so, so they should so, be able to just yeah, pull it from that. Yeah, so they they literally they they pull it from the API, um, the law entries, the law triumphs, the law tabs. But what they really do, and the, the value that they really add to it, is they actually categorize everything. So someone Ooh. they've got a team that goes through and reads it, and once they finish reading it, like a law entry, they'll go, "Oh, this is about the drifter." And they'll put a tag on it. So, you know, if you want to learn about the drifter, you could go there, you find the category drifter, you click on it, and it will bring up everything that they've categorized as related to the drifter. And then you can just go nuts and you can read that. Um, Likewise, with the release of the Lord Triumphs, everything's in their books. So if you want to read Cade's law book, you can just go click, go find the book, a man they called Cade, Click on it and it will have all the entries and you can just read as, until your heart's content from start to finish um, and however <laughs> long it takes you. So that that's that's what and I then do. And you realize you've been up all night and you've been reading. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So like, well, I was just going to say, so some of those, some of those books are really manageable. Um, and I think the largest is called Maracena, which is the, the one about the, basically the origin oh, story <laughs> of Prince, of, of Prince, of, uh, Queen Marasov. And that is, I did a quick word count just before. That's about 23,000 words. It is, um, <laughs> you, you know, you, you obviously can get through it, you know, in, in one sitting, but, uh, yeah. that's just like, that's a book. That's it's a book. That's not, it's a book. That's an actual book. It's a proper book. <laughs> yeah. So, so Mylan with Forsaken, obviously we've gotten this dirge of content, whether it's lore, 
uh, in-game actual stuff to do when it's uh, Gambit or the raid or exploring the Dreaming City. Um, but how has your experience been so far? So not outside of all that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, so from like a story perspective, I think like Forsaken's in its best, you know, Destiny's in its best sort of uh, shape ever. I think um, if you want to call it a formula for like storytelling, I think having, you know, missions on either side, like, you know, you got your, your, your beginning campaign missions and you got your end campaign missions. So it sort of bookends the, the campaign. And then in between you got your adventures, which is your grind and your leveling. And I, I really enjoy that they put adventures as part of the story. Um, and then if you are new to Destiny, it makes complete sense. If you're not new to Destiny, there's heaps of secrets and heaps of things to, to discover. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of depth to it. And not only that is then what they've done is uh, players then affect the story. So you've got like the raid, you know, that goes campaign, mm, so cool. it continues into the raid, the raid, the impact of Dreaming City, the Im- Dreaming City keeps changing. And as we know, the, the, the campaign's still going each week. And I think that is the best iteration of Destiny storytelling to date. Um, I wonder if they had a fail safe in place for if no one beat the raid that first week. Oh. It's like, oh, this is going to not change at all. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be interesting if no one... <sighs> That's a really good point because obviously they plan for that change to happen. I mean, I think that would be maybe they were sweating, man, when, when people were getting to like 19 <laughs> hours or 18 hours. Like, oh my God, guys, what are we going to do? They must have. What have we done? They must have had a, maybe they had an alternative like little dialogue message. That would have been cool. Well, it's still going. Yeah. W- yeah, it would have been. It's an alternate universe somewhere uh, where no one's beaten it. And we're sitting here waiting. Yeah, that would be for cool. something to happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like from a story point of view, I think Forsaken's fantastic. Um, from a gameplay point of view, you know, I think that's been very obvious too. I absolutely love Gambit. Uh, the, I, I oh, have, I've got it's so the, good. <laughs> it's so good. I've got the itch back to like, you know, I haven't completed the raid yet, and man, I want to grind levels. I want all characters. I, the the supers, uh, nearly all of them. Are, Nearly all of them are amazing. <laughs> There's a couple of <laughs> ones that are less impressive in there. They have their they have their very they they have their own place. Let's just say yeah. That. They're not they're not for everything, but they have their place. Yeah, there. and you know, players are just swamped. There there is literally something to do every day, and that was that was one of the big um, goals. That was something they they pushed at the summit. That's one of their uh, their mottos or or um, you know, goals that they're pushing is, you know, make, make destiny a hobby again. And, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think that's been easily achieved. So Mylan, what would you say is your favorite piece of lore that you've come across so far? Well, it could be over the whole, like of destiny, but if you want to get specific, to oh, Forsaken, man, I've it, forsaken is really hard because everything I've read is amazing, but I think there's probably a couple of, <laughs> A couple of mentions. Firstly, I have to ask, have you seen the Titan mark from the last Wish raid that involves Marisov and Shax? Oh, I have not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, all you PvP, let me throw this here. All you PvP fans out there about to have your mind blown. <laughs> I'm going to throw this out here. Uh, there's probably spoilers to the story at this point going forward. So if you are sensitive to anything, just, uh, I don't know. Skip ahead. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you probably should. Hear yeah. This. But I, I please, think, please I think, me. um, uh, as long as you've completed the, the campaign and unlocked the dreaming city, uh, I don't think there'll be anything, yeah. uh, spoiler based in here, unless you plan on reading the law entries yourself, essentially. So, yeah. um, Marasov, right. Queen of the reef. Mm-hmm. has a captured arm Kara, which is Riven, who grants wishes. And one of the wishes that Marisov grants is to have Lord Shax teleported to her. And the, the card basically oh. has Shax, like, just sort of dazed and confused at why he's standing in front of Marisov. She requests him to read some poetry 
And then the card implies that they have a bit of sexy time, essentially. Woo! <laughs> so, Woo! so if you see people, Shax! yeah, the the end sentence is, you dog. He stayed longer, and the helmet stayed on, and the helmet stayed on. <laughs> so, look, that's amazing. Considering your uh, your your crucible radio, I think that needs to be mentioned as. Uh, a, oh. a favorite piece of law with your, with your with your with your mentor, your crucible mentor, Shax. Oh, that's so great. Um, I want to have him on the show at some point just to like talk to us <laughs> in in Shaq's voice. That would be right. great. <laughs> um, but apart from that, I'm a really big fan of uh, Varix's story and the Drifter's story. Um, Varix's story probably gave me the, the shivers and the chills the most um, oh, yeah. with what happened to him. Uh, and I can sort of go into that if you if you want me to do a quick rundown of that. So yeah, let's uh, let's let's do a quick what happened to Varix. Okay. Because he's nowhere. Yeah. And everybody that's played PvP D1 remembers going past him to get to uh, Brother Vance. Right. So, so um, Varix, uh, what you don't know from the campaign is there's a little bit of like a uh, prologue to um, the Forsaken. And then that is that. that Varix is the prison warden. He's working with Petrovenge. The queen is nowhere to be seen, but they're still stocking up the prison of elders with basically, you know, all the different races, whoever they yeah. capture, right? The criminals don't the, stop. The criminals, yeah. The criminals of the <laughs> galaxy. Um, and uh, Petra Venge actually brings in uh, Prince Aldrin and the Barons. And Petra Venge has already clued in that um, Prince Aldrin is, is, is infected with something. He's corrupted. He's not quite right. Um, and Varix is trying to work out what his illness is and keeps him locked up. But he has such devotion to Prince Aldrin, he finds it really hard to see sort of Prince Aldrin in this almost psychotic uh, hallucination state. Um, meanwhile, while this is happening, he, um, Varix gets confirmation that the Kell of Kings, which is so that the House of Kings is a is a fallen house. Um, the Kell of Kings was actually killed by Prince Aldrin and uh, the fanatic before, oh, before bringing them in. And this links, so go on. The- the Kell of Kings is like the last, is that the last? Kel? Yeah, exactly. So um, Varix is concerned because he, he feels like the Kell of Kings was the last sort of true Kell that would remember sort of the fallen traditions that would remember um, the time of old, so to speak, those, those houses that survived the fallen collapse. And so that was... Outside of himself, obviously. Right, yeah. So that was Varix's last sort of hope of, of reuniting the fallen. And so with him dead, Varix basically decides that he needs to take the mantle, that he needs to rise up and be the Kel of the fallen people. Um, and Ooh. so he's the one who actually triggers the prison break. He's the one who actually opens the prison doors and lets Prince Aldrin out and lets the barons out and, um, it causes causes a ruckus and causes, uh, leaves. Yeah, which is the which is the <laughs> prologue to Forsaken. So that's actually what happens in the oh. moments before Forsaken. And the reason why um, we see the servitor speak like Varix is Varix basically sends a program out um, through servitor, and he, and he, and he, and the the message goes out to all fallen to basically say, let's come together and let's rise and be. Um, well, he says, Elixni must rise. Yes, that's how it ends. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So it's a real, that, that really gets me. Every time I read that, like the last, the last words of Varix, Elixni must rise. Yes. <laughs> you know, he leaves the prison of elders. It's so cool. I'm sure that's not the last time we'll see Varix. Well, I uh, doubt it. In the world or in game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that, that, Leads us to a very good place. Like that was the prologue to the story. Yep. So what the hell happened in the story? Right. So like for someone that just a lot of people that played uh, or that are PvP players will tend to like rush through, yep. and they just want to get to the, their ability to play the game. 
and play PvP. So what happened? What are, what are all the, like, the scorn, yeah. I guess? And uh, are they fallen? Yeah, they're a form of fallen. The, the best, um, the thing about fallen. They've fallen further? <laughs> they've fallen, you would say? <laughs> they've, they've definitely <laughs> fallen further. Well, actually, so th- this is this is the whole thing about the fallen, right? They, they've fallen from their, you know, traditions. They've fallen from their hierarchy. They've fallen from grace with the traveler. The whole sort of theme of the fallen is to reclaim their identity. And that's why, you know, Varix takes offense to the word fallen. Like that is like a slur to to them. Like they are Elixni and they've been branded as Ah. the fallen. Um, And that's a reminder of how far they've, they've basically fallen from, you know, the, the traveler's grace and being aligned with them. So, and, and each of the, the, the fallen race is basically, um, they need ether. That's their life source. And typically we've seen with the expansions, new fallen try to, try to release themselves from ether because that's very restrictive. So for example, like Mm -hmm. Varix actually looks weak because he has to ration how much ether he has. Um, and like- He's not trying to use it. Right, he's not trying to use it all. And when he takes big drinks of ether, he, this is a really cool description, like he grows stronger, he looks taller, like he looks bigger, you know, his posture improves. So like it, they are really dependent on ether. So um, for example, Rise of Iron used Siva and they enhanced ether with Siva. And, right, and that's how we got the- mm that brand of Fallen. And so you sort of see Fallen trying to free themselves of ether. That's sort of a a common theme. And so the Scorn are exactly that. The Scorn have corrupted their ether. And it's not necessarily said exactly what their corruption is, but most signs seem to point to that it's like the darkness, that somehow they're using the darkness to corrupt their ether. Um, And... So they've died already too. Yes. So they're like, they've been revived through this. Yeah, so that's revealed huh. to us in Varix's story. When he was test, so he's he's testing this right, and this is a really sort of cool and crazy thing about Varix. When he imprisons Fallen, he has a servitor that basically siphons ether out of them. So this is like, hmm. this is like prisoner of war camp type of he's stuff. Kind of, I was going to say he's kind of maniacal. Yeah, so this is like, physically weakens his prisoners by limiting their life source. This would be like sticking you in a prison with less oxygen. So when he does this to the scorn, his servitor blows up because of the corruption. And so that's when he starts to realize that they've done something to that ether. And then he basically does all these experiments and this dark ether goes into the bodies of fallen that have already been killed and reanimates them and brings them back to life. So hmm. the fact that like the barons talk about Prince Aldrin as their father, it sort of suggests that, you know, Prince Aldrin's infected with this darkness, this corruption, and he brought the barons back to life. And that's why they call him father. Um, so, is Aldrin taken or any of those? I wouldn't say taken, like- taken. I would say closer to the darkness than taken. And this is where gotcha. this is where I need to give like a I should have given this disclaimer before. I have not read all the lore entries. So there could be an answer here that I'm missing. There, 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 there could be, but from what I've read, I don't know the exact answer yet. Um, that's fair. Uh, so, but <sighs> you mentioned, you mentioned the barons. Yeah. Uh, who are they? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, apart from like all their, you know, specific names that, that we know them, they, from what I've read of their backstory, they started off as dregs, which is the lowest rung Ooh. of the fallen, right? The guys with only two arms. And mm-hmm. the way that a dreg grow stronger and becomes bigger is they basically consume more ether and they can actually grow their arms back. And 
the way that they get that ether is they impress their captain and their captain gives them more ether and they become a vandal and they impress their captain more and then they they basically keep progressing the, the, the ranking system. Now, the barons hmm. essentially stole from other, like they didn't really follow that hierarchy. They like just stole ether from other fallen. And they're like, we're just going to become strong. And then I don't actually know sure. what happened after that. I, I either assume they died, Prince Aldrin brought them back to life, and then that, and then their corrupted ether just kept going more powerful, and that's how they grew to their size. All right. So you kind of mentioned Aldrin as well. Oh yeah, I haven't uh, finished that story, have I? <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of like, do you have an idea of what was going on with him? So yeah, yeah. He- so. The reason, so that he, so Prince Aldrin's hallucinating. Essentially, the 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 Marasov we see in the campaign is an hallucination of. He's tripping on darkness. Well, <laughs> I I think it'd probably be more accurate to say that it was Riven causing the hallucinations, oh, yeah. and Riven. So the Ahamkara, yeah, you mentioned the Ahamkara was trapped in the Dreaming City, and there's a whole backstory to how Riven was was, was trapped there, and. The way that River needed to be released was that River needed both light and darkness. So that's why River mm-hmm. manipulates Prince Aldrin because he's got the essentially darkness in him, right? And so he goes and gets the, mm-hmm. the a crystal from the Traveler, which is the light. And that's why we see the scene where basically darkness comes out of Prince Aldrin and you don't see him corrupted anymore. And he combines it with the crystal and then that releases the voice the the voice of Riven rather than Riven himself. Mm. It's the big tentacle right? in that end of mission. Yes. So that's my interpretation of how that campaign played out. So I keep getting dropped into these weird ascendant realms all over the dreaming city. What uh, what what are, what is what is the point of that? What what are what are ascendant realms? Right. Um, so the first sort of documentation of Ascendant Realms comes in the Books of Sorrow, uh, specifically around Oryx. Essentially, um, Oryx made a bargain with the worms, became uber powerful, so powerful that it's described that his will essentially created another reality. So when he died, his soul just lived on. And that was the first instance of an Ascendant Realm. The Hive then worked out that they could travel to this other realm and pretty much safeguard their soul. So what would happen is um, if someone... Like a horror crux. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Very similar, (laughs) very similar. So um, they, if someone, if you killed them in our realm, they wouldn't actually die. The only way you could kill an Ascendant Hive would be to go into their realm and destroy them there. So that's why in the Mm. Taken King, we kill Oryx in the campaign and then in the raid to properly kill him, we have to go into his Ascendant Realm and kill him there. And that's the same thing with Crota too. Yeah, same thing with Crota as well. So I don't know if it's... So the, the difference is like maybe between a throne world and an ascendant realm. I think they're used synonymously in the law, but you might mm-hmm. be able to argue that like all the throne worlds are in the ascendant plane, this other reality, right? You could have just different, different parts. Yeah, like, like, like planets in a galaxy, I guess, right? You could have Oryx's okay. throne world, you could have Marasov's throne world, you can have Crota's throne world, and they all sit within the ascendant realm. That being said, a lot, I, I'm pretty sure most of the Lord uses Ascendant Realm and Throne World synonymously in there. So I don't know if Oryx has another has a different Ascendant Realm than Marasov, than, than Crota, or if they're sort of all housed in the same one. I'd probably just need to check the exact wording of, of that kind of stuff. But I think for simplicity, you, you can just... You know, you can say that all the throne worlds are housed in the center realm, or you can say that they do. Oh, I don't think it really matters too much. All right. So the throne worlds and the ascendant realm have a tie to Riven? 
So, yeah, um, Riven, the Ahamkara, the best way to think about Riven is like a genie, right? A genie that gives you wishes. And sure, you know, like Eve. The genie is never nice, yeah, though. They're right. always trying to. They're trick trying to trick you, you right? So it, it's like when you, um, you wish for something and they take your words literally. And that's sort of how Riven. Like if you wish for shacks. Yeah. That's how Riven like wins bargains <laughs> is you don't word your wish properly and she will take advantage of that. Um, there was yeah. one person that was smarter than Riven and that was Queen Marasov and classic sort of genie move, you know, like you use your first wish to wish for like infinite wishes. She like basically <laughs> wished for, wished to enslave Riven. So she actually- ah. ins- So basically she asked for infinite wishes. Yeah. She enslaved Riven <laughs> and then assisted the tower to kill all the remaining wish dragons. So she helped kill Ooh. all of the brothers and sisters of Riven. So she's driving that stock. Exactly. Up. That's exactly what she says. She's like, uh, you know, power is good. Unique power is better. So, sure. <laughs> so she's the only one with Riven. And then what happens is the event of taking King occurs. Um, Marasov is killed, supposedly killed. Oryx killed. is yeah, supposedly killed. killed. Well, sorry, Marasov is supposedly killed, right? Riven's sitting mm-hmm. in the cage still, basically caged in the Dreaming City. And the Awoken have been, you know, um, dissipated. And at that point, before we kill Oryx, Oryx comes along and finds Riven and is like, hey. Oh. And Oryx, and, and Riven's like, hey, I never made a bargain with a king before. I would like to make a bargain with a king. And um, <laughs> they, they make a bargain and Oryx takes Riven. So then at that point, Riven ah. becomes taken. Then and that's we, where, that's yes. where we're, we're left kind of. Well, right? then we kill Oryx and then his throne is left vacant. And someone comes in that's and it. claims his throne and claims Riven. And that's what hasn't been revealed yet. Everyone suspects um. it will be Oryx's sister. Savathun, that she's the one that's come in, claimed Oryx's throne, claimed Riven, and that is why the curse is on the city. Because that was her last wish. Oh, jeez. Well, I feel like there's a lot more to talk about uh, when it comes to Riven, because there is a whole raid around the last wish mm-hmm. and how it affected everything. So I think we'll save that. We'll save that for another cool. one. And kind of... Let everybody stew with what they have so <laughs> far. Lot. I think a lot of people will not be able to get shacks out of them. <laughs> so I would wish for shacks. Just for sure. wait. Wait till you go into the raid and get that item. You open up that little tab. <laughs> I'm never going to take right. it off. <laughs> so uh, real quick, in the game, what do you think's next? Um, so I think we will see... Sav- well, we yeah, Savathun. Savathun is Oryx's sister. I, I don't think we really know the exact nature of the curse yet or the exact nature of the last wish unless it's in the Shattered Throne mission, which I haven't actually completed yet. So maybe the ending's actually in there. But I, I think there's some trickery to come still from Savathun, who's Oryx's sister. Mm-hmm. Well, we we shall see. We have a lot of we have a lot of content coming up with the Black yeah. Armory and Joker's Wild yeah. and Penumbra. Yeah. Everything's kind of laid out for us. Um, but Mylon, this has been great, man. I love talking lore, and uh, it's nice to be able to kind of fit it into a, an episode of Crucible Radio because uh, these people, these dummies, need uh, <laughs> need some lore of their life. Um, as far as finding you, uh, where can people? find all of your videos where you do a much better job at this than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so over on uh, YouTube, uh, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Mylan Games. Or you could just search for Mylan Games and it will come up M M Y E L I N Games. Um, or just punch uh, Destiny Law or Destiny 2 Law into the um, YouTube search bar and it should be there somewhere on that page. And you can... Um, Check out all the videos there. 
And uh, you got a little thing coming out with Bungie, don't you? Yeah. That yeah. you helped with, at least helped yeah, with, Yeah, right? I was part of a team that um, put together the Grimmore Anthology, uh, which is... Ooh. Oh, I, look, I, I guess you could say it is the Destiny 1 version of what we're seeing now with the with the law books, right? It's 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 a Destiny One Actual it's a Destiny books. One version of of that. It's um you know a collection of books uh, that you know the Grimoire cards have ne- have like this like with Forsaken. This is the first time that that things have been put in a certain order, like with your books. You, you can go yeah. through and read them in order. That de- that wasn't really there in Destiny One. YouTubers and, and content creators had to do that for people or people had to work them out themselves. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be a, a really nice way to enter into Destiny 1 law. Oh, so it's like the cliff notes, like what we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Island, it has been wonderful. Everybody go check them out. Go watch all the videos. Watch the one from today about Marasov. And the book, he's going to read the 23,000 words, and you won't have to. <laughs> yeah, <so>. right. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. everyone, Swain here. You know that Crucible Radio is your source for all things Destiny PvP, and I know you want more than just this video, so make sure to head on over to crucibleradio.com to find all of our past episodes, detailed Crucible maps, t-shirts, and much, much more.